Ryan McMahon, Ellie Harris, Montero. They're yeah. not both third basemen. I mean, they are, but they aren't. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah, Ryan McMahon's going to be playing second base this year. Montero should be filling his shoes there uh, at third base. Thought that would be a good way to kind of link those two guys together, yeah. especially after the loss of Brendan Rodgers at second base. Um, what would have been your thoughts just in general about about a combo? I know McMahon and Rodgers, you probably would have liked a little bit more than McMahon and Montero, mm-hmm. but I still think there's a lot of juice there to be excited about a McMahon and Montero combination at second and third base. Yeah, and, and you like that you're going to really get an idea of what you have with Montero this year. Um, you're going to you're going to really get to answer a question of okay, what, you know, because before before the Rodgers injury, it was, it was you like Montero, but where does he play? You want to see what he's got, but. You're you're not gonna play him on at first base over CJ Crone. No, you know, you, and he wasn't gonna play at third over McMahon. So, uh, at least it, the, like the one like bright side out of out of the whole Rogers thing is that you are gonna get to figure out what you have with Elleris Montero this year. Um, it, as you said, it's not as good a combination as McMahon and Rogers would have been, but you know, <laughs> maybe it ends up being just as good, sure. right? Like maybe. Because we know defensively that McMahon's got the goods. And yep. He can play a high level. Um, and uh, the bat will play better at second base. Like, you'll, you know. Right. Hey, if you're going to be a 98 OPS plus guy every single year, you can do that. You can get away with it a lot better at second base than third base. Yeah, DJ LeMahieu, uh, as a second baseman, was considered you know a top 10 mm-hmm. second baseman. You put him over at third base, and you go, eh, he might be in the top 15. Like, that's just, again, the the, the offensive numbers are, yeah. are, are different. The profiles are yep. different. Uh, I think McMahon, you know, I could see him, you know, end up playing a little bit at, at third base this year. I think that's one of the reasons why my hot take for McMahon is he's going to win a gold glove. It might not necessarily be at second base. It could be at the new utility spot, right? Yeah. Now they've got that. So I think yeah. that's actually going to help him out a little bit. You can easily see that, I mean, you know, with – you give Montero days off or, you know, right. however they want, however they want sure. to work it, you know, cause it's, um, uh, whatever, whatever they want to do at second base. You know. Yeah. 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 I see. guess, I guess technically Mike, Mike Moustakis is hanging around. Kind of. Uh, that one I don't think will happen, <laughs> but Trejo at second, Castro at second, oh, McMahon can go to third base. Um, and talking about Montero, you know, his numbers at triple a were great. And Bud Black has said it multiple times that he's got nothing left to prove at, at AAA. And yeah. that's one of the reasons why he needs to stay on the big league roster. And again, his growth, you know, might, might uh, get stunted just a little bit if he's on the bench, probably not going to happen now, obviously, uh, as we said, but yeah. um, hit 310 in the Pacific coast league, which is nice. 15 homers, 54 RBI. And you go, yeah, it's Pacific coast league did that in only 65 games. So that's that's pretty darn good, and and he still when he got to the majors, this is a thing I think that gets overlooked uh, just a little bit because you know he only had 176 at bats. He had a 432 slugging percentage last year. Yeah, of the fo- doubles. Yeah, a lot, 15 of them. Uh, I want to I wanna say maybe five home runs. Yeah, six. It was either four or six, and yeah. I went with the middle number. Uh, six home runs. The thing with his 432 slugging percentage of the 14 Rockies who had at least 180 plate appearances. Only Chris Bryant and C.J. Crone had a better slugging percentage than El Harris Montero. So he's got that pop, and, and now yeah. he's going to get an opportunity to play, and, and we'll get a chance to see you know, just how high that potential can reach. Yeah, contact is the problem, because um, when he makes contact, he, he makes contact. He makes it count. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, you're talking about a, a, a strikeout-to-walk ratio last year that's not good. No. Um, he had, what, like eight walks last year or something like that? Like, it's got to improve, it, yes. It was just... He doesn't. He didn't do enough deep in counts. He doesn't work counts very well. He doesn't. The you know all that stuff that you get with big league experience. You know where you you understand how to handle yourself in different situations was was really lacking. It was it was just that that level of polish, right. and polish is what keeps you in the big leagues. It's not always the most talented guys. It's the guys who understand how to be the most consistent, how to, how to have the, the, you know, how to level off here and not go through the extremes. Because if there's one thing that is true across all major sports is that coaches hate guys that ride the roller coaster. They want consistent. They will take a lower, uh, a lower ceiling player, a lesser talented player, but one that has a higher floor that the guy gets to on a regular basis. Because when you watch Montero having a great day, you're like, oh my gosh. Look at this guy. I mean, the guy just kills the ball. Yeah. You know, he's, he's going to have really high exit velocities and 
He's gonna he's gonna barrel up a lot of balls, but what uh, what is he doing to be productive and to be an impact guy and to keep and 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 to be a a productive member of your offense when he's not on his best day? Can he work a count? Can he take extra pitches? You know, can he can he work a walk? Right now, the answer is no. And uh, coming into this year, I would say the answer is no. Yeah, uh, I don't want to like discount his season, obviously, but. That's that. The, like, those are my concerns with him. Is what does he do? Uh, you know, how does how does he develop in those areas of the game? Because you have to feel encouraged about the power profile. That yeah, he can he can barrel up a baseball pretty well. And when you put Ryan McMahon at second, like one of the things of, that you're not going to lose with the with the Rogers to McMahon tr- transition is that you are going to continue to get 20 home runs. You know, you are going to get a power profile uh, out of your second baseman and not, you know, your classic like slick fielding six sure. home run guy, you know, or, you know, nothing, nothing Luis like Castillo. that. I yeah. think the, I think the other concern with Montero, of course, is is the defense at, at third base. It can that's be another bad. Area that goes beyond just lacking polish. Um, you know, he only had 24 games at third base last year and 16 at first. So, I mean, you know, there, there's going to be those opportunities for him to go over to first base. And that's where maybe again. Where McMahon's at third base, so we'll keep an eye on yeah. uh, him defensively. McMahon, you know, um, well, Montero's a great candidate for your DH spot as well. If yeah. you're trying to keep him in the He's lineup, hitter-ish. but you know, you're not. <laughs> yeah, you don't because you are concerned about his ability to to handle third base defensively on yeah. a regular basis. And it and it does sound that it does sound like he'll get the start on on opening day and the, the one thing about it though is that you really want him to figure that out because right. you have so many candidates for first base elsewhere yeah that oh this guy couldn't handle it so we have to like dump him here that's not what you want to do there you yeah you want to get you know, st- getting stuck is right. what ends up happening right yeah. because i mean you do have a michael tolia hanging around you know you do have a graham levine on the way and and among others like there are a handful of guys that in your organization that you kind of can look at and say i could play first base for you at some yeah. point hunter goodman might even be in that conversation oh that's the other one all right so with ryan mcmahon you know he kind of got stuck through the first four months of the season i think he was feeling the pressure of uh, of his contract extension and then finally april 1st he had a big meeting with uh, Bud Black. Not a big meeting, but just to sit down, just a conversation. It wasn't a big deal. But they had a talk, and it worked. He started hitting on April 1st uh, in that trade deadline series in San Diego from August 1st to the end of the year. 271, 12 homers, 500 slugging percentage. We talked about ability being the greatest, uh, or rather availability being the greatest ability. Mm-hmm. Uh, 305 games for Ryan McMahon over the last two years, 28th most in MLB. Go back to the start of the 2019 season, uh, which includes the pandemic season in 2020, 497 games played, tw- tied for 21st most. Mm-hmm. So he's healthy, he's there, he's putting up numbers. The real question I got for you, AJ, is are we are we going to see another level from Ryan McMahon? It, it's in there, but are we are we ever going to see it? I mean, you're talking about a guy that's a three or four win player right now, you know? Like, yeah. That's still good. And a lot of value. Like, yeah, there's, that's plenty of value there. Um, you know, just like a solid big league player. Can he take a leap to maybe being above average? At second base, maybe. Uh, but I, I guess I guess for me, I'm just not going to continue to dream, you know, the one thing he's you're talking about had almost 1,200 at bats the last two years. Um, That's fair. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm more into the acceptance stage of Ryan McMahon's career of who he is. I'm fine with who he is. I'm not asking him to continue to uh, raise that level because they paid for a certain player. They're getting that player. I think he's fairly compensated. You know, he's a quality guy. It's fine. Um, I, I, I'm not overly excited about, like, I, I'm not, like, over the moon, like, oh, this is it. This is the breakout. Sure. Um, that that was kind of last year. Last yeah. year was that year. He's still only 28, yeah. to be fair. So we, we still could see that. But I think the hope is, you know, for any player with his ability, you go, oh, man, he, he has that all-star potential. He can get out there. But yeah. can you do it consistently where you go, well, this is that player. <sighs> this is him. Um, that I don't know that we'll see. But I still think there's... At least yeah. one All Star appearance. I mean, you, know, you mentioned you career. mentioned twelve home runs starting on August first. Yeah, like, 
And it's like that salvaged his season statistically. Otherwise, yeah. you were looking at it and you were like, what a nightmare this is. We paid we paid for this guy and he didn't give us anything, that, yeah. anything close to what we thought we were getting. Um, to me, that's he salvaged it, but also like it's a pretty big concern that it needed that level of salvation in the, in the to begin with. True. Um, because you just can't have one of the few guys that you're like, this is a big league regular for us as a guy that we are relying on. We know what we're getting and then have him turn around and just be okay. 40 home runs is maybe it's not that hot of a take, but between McMahon and Montero, 40 home runs. Are you, are you going, are you going to go 45? Are you going to pit me on that? Are you going to go 50? I mean, I don't want to price his right to on this, but uh, if you don't get 40 out of him, I think you're really disappointed. Yeah, it's not that hot it of a should take. Really, it should really be closer. Like, you're really trying to find a way to get to 50 between those two guys. Like, you know, it, it, yeah, I'm going to say 50. If I'm they say 50. are, like, 50, 50 should be your baseline, I think, expectation of they've had they've proven themselves uh, in, in a quality year. Like, 40 should be your, like, if these guys don't give you 40, you failed. You know you're getting 40. So 50 is the number yeah. you're, you're shooting. You for. really want to, between those two, you really do want to see 50. 